Uh, I'm, I'm going to be begin with the end. We're talking about optimism. I'll also talk about pessimism. There was an article written a year ago in Time magazine. As a matter of fact, the, the entire article and the entire magazine was called The Art of Happiness. What does it take to be happy? Because we're Americans, we all want to be happy, right? This is the summary of the article, and it's also the summary of what I'm going to talk about today. These are good things, and these are all free things. I'm not going to se uh, send you to a doctor and get a pill. I'm not going to tell you to go buy something because you're going to feel better. Well, you will buy it, you'll feel better, but it will pass. You want a more satisfying life? Number one, how simple? Count your blessings, and it's called gratitude. Don't tell me what you don't have because you don't have it, and it just doesn't matter. Tell me what you got. You're functioning fairly well, right? You're going to have a great meal tonight. That's more than most of the people in the world can say. Be grateful for what you got. If you want to be miserable for what you don't got, go ahead. And that's why there's so much misery in the world. Next, practice acts of kindness, and this is simple stuff. Sending a letter, making a phone call, holding a door open for somebody, extending yourself, doing a job you don't need to do, but you just care about somebody. Be kind. Next, savor life's joys. There's a lot of good things about Kansas, even though there was a book written about what's wrong with Kansas. We have great sunrises and sunsets. We have beautiful seasons, at least three out of the four. We have people that we're around. Next, thank a mentor. Somebody's got you here somehow. You can thank them. They don't have to be alive, and you can still thank them. There's not enough appreciation in the world. Next, learn to forgive. This will save you a lot of money in therapy. <clears throat> and it's pretty simple, too. Uh, the people that are not able to forgive are the ones that are tearing themselves up inside. They're holding the anger and the resentment, and for what? Do you think it's hurting the other person? It's not. It's hurting you. Why don't you forgive and let go? We've all got reasons, right? I mean, we had parents. Those are the first people you can blame. And then you can blame your first wife, second wife, first husband, second husband. Blame your kids. Blame the environment. Blame the economy. Or let it go. Top right, life is just made out of time and energy and invest it with people you care about. Next, take care of your body. Or if you don't, there's a lot of hospitals in this state that'll take care of your body. And finally, develop strategies for coping with not the good times, but with the tough times, stress and hardships. <clears throat> this is what the world is made out of. When you grow up, the age of two, you go through this thing called terrible twos. And the psychology behind the terrible twos is you think that you're the center of the world. You're the most important person in the world. And then you grow up, hopefully, some people never do, you grow up and you realize there's something beyond yourself. And it's your family, it's society, it's the culture, it's the world, it's the universe. And if you look at the people that have changed the world, these are people that let go of their self and their ego. But life is just made up of relationships and they all seem to be pretty fleeting. If you want to have an impact on people, you have to start going beyond who you think you are and start helping other people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Who are you from? Mortuary Arts. Mortuary Arts. Oh, oh, you're one of those officials, aren't you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> are you are you a state worker? Yep. Yes. Are you too, Bob? Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry about that. I didn't make any state worker jokes yet, did I? Okay. Okay, I won't. Are you also with the state? I'm retired from the state. Oh, you're retired from the state. Okay, no state jokes. There's three reasons. There's three reasons why people experience more pressure and stress in their lives, and specifically with funeral directors, dentists, and psychiatrists, even more than the rest of the professions. One is the people that you have to deal with. And if you look at the quality of personality that comes in to see you, come in to see a dentist, come in to see a psychiatrist, you know you're dealing with people that, you, it's not like going to Dillard's and buying a shirt and they're happy when they leave. Next, there's more information out there that you have to be aware of. And the third is the technology is getting out of control. But somehow we're supposed to be aware of all the changes that are going on which create so much pressure in our lives. Here we go. Uh, well, here you are. This is why. Um, there was a paper written in the late 70s, and it wasn't a paper written to recruit dentists. It was actually a paper that talked about why dentists experience so much stress and anxiety and later in life develop so many mental illnesses. So two things. One is the next time you see your dentist, give him or her a hug because they're having a tough time. 
but also you all are very similar to them and with psychiatrists. Four reasons. Number one, the people that come to you come to you with a heightened level of fear and anxiety. And in positive psychology, they say that everyone needs to have a ratio of good events to bad events. And if your ratio of bad events to good events is overwhelming, then you start experiencing not only physical, but psychological distress and disorder. But for the most part, it's my understanding that people are not coming to you because they really want to. They come to you because they have to. There's also another factor, but it's involved in all these, but it's not brought up, and that is money. And money becomes a big issue. But the main thing is, psychologically, if you don't find ways to cope and you interject all this fear and anxiety, you're going to have some serious problems. Not enough positive experiences. Reason number two. Uh, separate from this group, you have limited and competitive social support networks in the world, especially when we're talking about large cities and several different funeral directors and several different companies that are running this. In smaller towns, it's not as competitive and it's not as limited in your social support. But as funeral directors and directresses, how do you say the female version of that? Are you a directress? Yeah. How do you say it? A director. A director? Okay. Uh, among funeral directors, do you normally get together and share stories with each other and support each other in your networks? The research says no, not as much as other professions. Three, and I was just informed of something in Hayes the other day. Uh, you all have easy access to drugs. And in Hayes, matter of fact, in Dodge City, they said everybody has easy access to drugs, not just funeral directors. And the fourth reason is you, you, come, <clears throat> you come to what I call a deeper understanding that some of the conditions that you're dealing with cannot be changed or healed. It's the finality of life. And it's not really the person that's gone, but the people that are left behind. But you're dealing much like dentists. Dentists realize, even though they're artists, and they can sculpt the teeth and make them, eventually the teeth are going to continue to decay. In psychiatrists even, there's no such thing as cure. The best you can do is try to manage, manage someone's mental illness. 